This week on Maker Update, rack and pinion clocks, a knitting machine you can buy, a pie photo booth that won't let you down, my favorite glue tool, hammerhead pie pins, and Maker Fairs. It's Wednesday, April 5th. I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to another Maker Update. I hope you guys had a good week. I had a mixed bag of a week. I spent uh, the better part of last week troubleshooting a MakeBlock XY drawing machine that was just giving me nothing but grief. At some point, I swear I wanted to just take it out into the road and run it over and light it on fire. But I didn't, and I persevered, and I got it working just a few days ago. Uh, but uh, So things are going all right now. If you ask me now, things are going all right this week. But man, there was a troubleshooting nightmare happening earlier. Um, enough about me though, let's move on with the project of the week. Check out this Arduino power clock by Instructables designer, Jonathan Odom, AKA Jonatron. The design uses an Adafruit motor shield to drive two stepper motors, one to move a geared wooden strip that tells the hour, the other to move the strip with the minutes, which shoots back like an old typewriter at the top of the hour. Like any good Autodesk employee, John designed this whole thing up in Fusion 360 and includes this gorgeous web-based model that you can check out right from the Instructable. Even if you never make this thing, you should at least check out this model to zoom in on it and just geek out a little bit. And to be fair, there's a bunch of reasons you may never make this thing. John used just about every obscure expensive CNC device in the Autodesk Pier 9 lab to create this, including the water jet that he used to cut the aluminum frame. Still, there's a lot to be gleaned from this masterpiece, including a video tutorial that he links to from Rob Duarte that will show you how to make custom rack and pinion gears in Fusion 360. Now, if you really do wanna pull this project off, I see no reason why you couldn't swap out all that custom water jet cut aluminum for laser cut plywood. You know, it's not gonna hold up as well over time, but you know, maybe you could also switch things up and have it be more of a calendar than a clock. Then you're gonna subject it to less wear and tear. Just an idea. And now for some news. This past week, I saw MakeZine.com post about Knitterate, an automated knitting machine that's selling on Kickstarter for a MSRP of $7,500, but with a limited early backer price of $4,700 that may be gone by the time this video is out. Units are expected to ship this time next year. The machine looked to me a little small in the pictures when I first looked it up, but once I saw it next to a human for scale, I realized that it's kind of a monster that can output fairly large pieces. A sweater or a dress is seemingly not a problem, though you may end up stitching some pieces together on your own. This is cool though, and another interesting new tool for the maker arsenal. Time for one more project that I really like this week. This is a Raspberry Pi powered photo booth called the All Seeing Pi. I found it through the Adafruit blog, and although I've seen a bunch of great Pi photo booths, this one has two things going for it worth mentioning. One, it can apply some silly overlay images on your photo and tweet them out with a simple on-screen interface. It's cute. Two, the guide for building this project has seen a lot of time and attention from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It's broken out into two online guides with lots of clear pictures and code, and I suspect if you ran into any trouble at all, the forums at raspberrypi.org will be a great resource for you. So. Just do it. This week, as part of a co-op sponsorship with the excellent Cool Tools blog and podcast, I'm gonna do something new. I'm gonna do a one minute tool review on an uncommon tool that I love that I discovered by listening to the Cool Tools podcast. This is the Fast Cap Babe Bot or Baby Bot. It's a four ounce plastic bottle made for glue. I've got mine filled with wood glue. They also make a bigger 16 ounce version called the Glue Bot but I personally find this little one a little more handy. What this does is make laying down glue a much tidier and more exact process. The way it does this is that the design feeds glue up from the bottom through a spout, sort of like a fancy tea kettle. And when you're done squeezing out the glue, you get this immediate back pressure that sucks the glue right back into the bottle so you don't get that messy string of glue drool. There's also a little cap here that stays attached and keeps the glue from drying out and the whole thing makes me feel like a glue master. And it only costs $7. I've got an Amazon link in the show notes that also supports cool tools and this show. 
Now, I bought this bottle a few months ago after listening to the Cool Tools podcast with artist Paolo Salvagioni. He recommended it, and it's discoveries like that that make me such a big fan of the Cool Tools podcast and the blog. So you should check it out too. A few more tips to share with you. This week, I saw that Adafruit is stocking a jig for using a style of header pins on your pie called hammerhead pins. The idea is instead of soldering all these breakout pins to your board, you can literally hammer these in and they'll mushroom out sort of like a rivet and hold in place. I thought it was a neat idea and the whole thing is only $7, so no harm in giving it a try. I also noticed that the official Raspberry Pi magazine, Magpie, has a new issue out, number 56, and like all their issues, you can download it as a free PDF. There are a bunch of great projects in here and a great reference for getting around in the command line. Maker Fairs, you can tell it's Maker Fair season. There are five this weekend, including Cairo in Egypt, Hong Kong, Miami, Florida, Lakeville, Connecticut, and Fresno, California. Also this Saturday, I'll be giving a talk and a soldering workshop for the Mission Creek Art Life Tech Festival at the Iowa City Public Library. If you're in the area, you should come check it out. It's free. And that's it for this week's show. A huge thanks to Cool Tools for helping me to grow and support this show. I think this is gonna work out really well. And you should definitely check out their blog. And I can't recommend highly enough the Cool Tools podcast. Subscribe to that. You're gonna hear interviews with people like Adam Savage, Dale Doherty, Danielle Applestone, Star Simpson, all talking about their favorite tools. It's totally perfect for anyone who likes this show. All right? So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.